I, I think when a person experiences trauma or injustice in their life, like me, you do go, well, where, where are you, God? But I remember just going, well, if God loves the little children, I mean, you know, and he does, because that's what they sing in Sunday school, uh, I guess he loves them all but me. My mother was married six times. I went to 14 schools and 17 different houses. Um, but I think a pivotal point in my life that changed and gave me a very twisted worldview was when I was five years old, I got caught um, by a child molester and assaulted and left for dead in a commercial cooler uh, in 1970. And he was hoping that uh, I would die. I wouldn't be able to tell anybody what had happened. It was the middle of the summer and I was in shorts and a little, uh, a little cutoff outfit. He, this guy said, hey, come here, I wanna show you something in this building. And it was in between two chicken houses and, and it, the moment I followed him in there, he shut and locked the door. And he wasn't happy and jovial anymore. Um, and then he went to, you know, do bad things to little kids. And then, you know, I was crying and kicking and fighting. And uh, he shoved me in that commercial cooler and locked the door. And I remember beating on it and crying and, you know, kicking it, hoping somebody would come get me. But uh, I didn't have anybody, at least while I was conscious. So I ended up pulling my knees into my chest. It was so stinking cold. All I could hear was the hum of a, a cooler fan. I was pushing cold air in. And uh, I just, next thing I knew, I was asleep. I woke up to somebody ripping me out of there and rushing me up to the, uh, uh, the house. And, uh, and then when they found out what had happened, they found that guy and they actually beat him inside of his house and they hung him from behind a tree from my mamaw's house. It was a group of people and uh, they call it country justice. Uh, but, you know, I, I grew up just kind of bitter. That really, man, that, that absolutely uh, implanted in me just a, just a twisted view of humanity. Didn't want to trust people. Um, um, and I, you know, after a certain point, because more, you know, more bad things happen because of the environment I think that I was in. You know, I, I hold the, currently hold the world's record for the fastest martial art gun disarm. And, uh, and everybody loves it, you know, everybody's woohoo. Uh, but the reality is when I was seven years old, my stepfather put me in a chair and put a gun in my head with the hammer pulled back. And he would tap it to the side of my head and tell me, you know, if you ever tell anybody what I've done, I'll blow your brains out. And uh, he, so much of what he did was reinforced by fear. And uh, so I grew up hating him more than anybody. So you feel isolated and the shame of uh, abuse or torture or whatever, it, you know, you put it on yourself and condemnation and guilt. But the truth of the matter is the shame is never against the victim. The shame belongs to the perpetrator, regardless of, it doesn't matter how old you are. And, uh, but I remember just going, God, you know, why? You know, this isn't fair. And I always thought God caused it, but he didn't. I found an organization to take me in, the United States Marine Corps. And uh, I was able to serve under President Reagan it was a good, hard time for me. And it was six months before I got out the Marine Corps. I got a letter from my biological dad, uh, the guy who never really claimed me. And he said, he wrote me this letter that, you know, he'd gone crazy, but crazy for Jesus Christ. Uh, and he invited me to go to church, which is kind of odd. I was thinking, uh, but I went. And uh, that day, it was June 22nd, 1986. Uh, I heard, I only heard, I believed that Jesus Christ died uh, on the cross for me, my sins. And I stopped blaming everyone. And I took full responsibility for my own wrong. Because uh, that's, that's the crazy thing about life is, you know, people do you wrong, you do people wrong back. And according to God, it's still sin. It's what breaks this world. The truth is God doesn't cause evil like this to happen. He allows men 
They have their free choice to do what they want. It's their choice that so much evil happens in this world, not, not God's. What's amazing is God can redeem it. That's what I found him to be, the great redeemer of evil in this world. Before I got into ministry, I did uh, what, you know, I was naturally gifted with, which is martial arts. Uh, I've taught martial arts most of my adult life. I use now martial arts as a tool, a platform to get kids' attention, foster care, high school kids, anybody that thinks they're beyond God's hope and grace and love. I feel like God gave me that passion to do evangelism, to, to, to communicate the gospel to a lost, dying world. And just the opportunities never stop. And I remember when I started All Things Possible Ministries, I was worried I wouldn't have the opportunity to speak. Um, but, you know, it's, it's I love and I'm privileged to, to share the simple message that Jesus died on the cross for everyone's sins. And regardless of a person's background, they can have new life. If you know God has healed you spiritually, then do like what he said to the guy when he was lame guy, stand up, walk, run. The guy was running. He was so excited about what God had done. Just be excited about what God is doing and done in your life. People see it. People will see it.